Hello again, and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial, and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you're very welcome. Please give a thumbs up or a like to support this channel and help the videos be shared to a wider audience. Look in the description box below and you'll find the site address for the blog, the Master's Voice End Times Prophecy blog. You can also support this channel on Rumble, Bitshoot, and Brighteon. There's also a Spanish language channel by the name of La Voz del Señor. So you can subscribe there and you can find these prophecies being uploaded at the best speed that we can in the Spanish language. Today, I'm going to look at a prophecy called Return of the Giants Part 2. The reason I'm doing Part 2 and not Part 1 is because Part 1 also contains some of the information that has been covered in previous videos concerning the fall of the angels and the contamination of man. And the reason that it's very good for you to visit the blog and read these prophetic messages for yourself is so that you can understand that God is making a clear distinction between what humanity is and what these other things are. This is the Supernatural series on the Master's Voice, and it is important because every time God shares information, whether it's information from a natural source or whether it's information covering more supernatural things, we have to understand that God is very deliberate in how he uses his words, God's iterations, which means his statements and the things that he says are so important and even more so as we see the end of the age of humanity, that is the rulership of human beings, the, the ascendancy of human beings, and us being the, the lawful caregivers of this planet. We are going to enter a time when human beings will be extremely powerless. We will unfortunately be reduced to almost a kind of slavish position as we were in the earlier part of the planet, when fallen angels and giants and other creatures of renown, human and non-human, roamed this planet. And so I'm going to cover Return of the Giants Part 2 just to give an idea of a few more of the creatures that people may think are not real, and yet the Lord is clearly revealing that they are real, that they will be here among us, and that we would be wise to be advised of their existence. And so on this day, the Lord spoke to me at length about giants, and I wrote it down. And the first thing he said was, the time of ice giants and AI living, the time of snow queens and separation is here. Giants and other things are on their way back, and man cannot do anything about it. Now, for the Lord to say that man cannot do anything about it, it has, it has a few applications. One of it is that we will not be able to stop this time period in history. These things are already captured in the Bible. These things are already written about the fallen angels that are being held in chains because they left their first estate because of the sin, the great sin of leaving the position of heavenly beings to come and mate with human women, to come and be a part of human life, to come and basically mingle themselves with the seed of men, as it says in the book of Daniel. And so for that, that sin that these angels committed is unforgivable by the Lord. And when something is unforgivable, it means that what we call in law, the fruit of the poisoned tree falls under that punishment. So one of the things that the Lord told the fallen angels is that he would never forgive them. He, they sent Enoch um, in the book of Enoch, they sent Enoch to try and make an appeal for them. And the Bible, sh and, and sorry, the book of Enoch shows that they were actually quite sorry um, for what they had done. And they were weeping and they were heartbroken. And it wasn't so much over their sin. These angels were heartbroken at the question of separation from God. And notice that the first sentence the Lord gave me to start off this prophecy was the time of ice giants, AI living, Snow Queens and separation is here. The question of separation is hugely important because se separation basically determines where you will spend the rest of your life after you pass away. So these fallen angels were distraught and torn up about the question of their sin against God because they knew the penalty it carried. They were 
heartbroken and they begged Enoch, please go back to the Lord and find out if there is a way back for us. But God was very blunt in his answer. And the Lord said that he would never forgive them. And he said that part of their punishment for corrupting humanity, for sleeping with women and for bringing out upon the earth, not only great giants, but all the other different experimentation that they did. He said that part of their punishment would be to watch their giant children and all their little hybrid beasts die terrible deaths, that they would die in front of them and that they would live to watch their sons fall. Now, if you, if you correlate this with, for instance, Greek mythology, and I urge you to understand that these things are not mythology. These are actually the historical records that Western civilization in particular has been very excellent in preserving these accounts. In Greek mythology, the Titans, which were huge, huge, huge godlike beings, went into a progressive series of wars. So although they were all brother and sister, according to Greek mythology, or should I say Greek historical record, meaning Greek capturing of things that actually happened and are not falsehoods, these Titans fought one another so bitterly. And it is recorded that it was as if a form of madness came upon them and they fought each other in progressive wars until they basically wiped each other out. And this is exactly what God told the fallen angels would happen to their children, that they would fall upon one another in warfare and destroy one another. So we should understand as we listen to these things that they're not here for entertainment. I understand that these topics are actually quite trendy and people bring them out and call them story time because there is a hunger in the human heart to know about these things, but that is not why I'm here. Every time I switch this camera on, I am keenly aware of the job that God has given me, which is to proclaim his prophetic revelations so that after they are proclaimed, no one can say that they did not know. Whether people believe or not is not for me. What is for me is to speak these words in the name of the Lord, to let you know that he is the source and the revelator of these, of these things, this information, that he is doing it because he doesn't waste information. That's not his way. God is very careful about his words and he doesn't waste them. So the first thing that we should think and ask ourselves is, in these modern times, if someone is not putting this stuff up just for interest's sake, then it must be that God wants me to know about them, but why? The answer to that is very simple. This is vital and essential information that is not of interest. You will need this information to survive later on in the times that are not yet here. The second thing is that God is warning us because these creatures are deadly. So two, these are impossibly wicked creatures. And I wrote here, after God does not waste information, the Lord said to me, as I was about to write down point two, all I wrote for point two here is these creatures are deadly, but he said, celestial, the devil has changed his face. And this is true. No one has undergone a bigger makeover in modern times than the enemy. And no wonder, for Satan appeareth as an angel of light. The devil has greatly made over himself. And things that the ancient people feared and fled from, things that they warned their children strongly about, you now find these things starring in the Marvel movies. You now find these things starring as the superheroes the mighty men of renown have had a huge makeover and are now the favorites of five-year-old boys and even grown men. Everyone is fascinated with the superheroes. Everyone is fascinated with any kind of movie or book or video game that brings in something that is not like humanity, something other to us, and then gives us a chance to interact with that thing and see how it will play out. And so we watch these movies where these things terrify us and they interest us and they concern us, but... Because Satan has led this generation to believe that he is safely inside what you're watching me through, he's safely inside a box, he's safely inside YouTube, he's safely inside the TV or the video game 
console. He can't come out and harm you. This is why people have such a growing love for things that God actually hates, things that God has rejected, things that God will never forgive, and things that God is warning his church and anyone else who has ears to listen strongly to stay away from. The last thing is that, excuse me, please. The reason that God is exposing these things is because these truths are central to power to this day. Christians are waiting for the return of their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, but it would help Christians to remember that they are not the only people on this planet and that there is an equally large community that is waiting for their father to arise to his moment of power. They have a father, Satan, who has been cast down and suppressed by the power of the Lord, but who will be given a short time. If we have seen all the havoc and destruction that Satan has been able to work out through the hands of humanity to this moment, what do we think is going to happen when the hand of God draws back, when the Lord tells his righteous, righteous angels, draw back? For the time of wickedness, the time of destruction, and the time of the evil one has come. This is when we will start to see these fearful signs and sights coming on the world. So let us be very mindful of what God wants us to know. And so the first thing I will talk about here is ice giants. The Lord said that ice giants will punch their way up through the snow when they wake up. They are not dead. They are only sleeping cryogenically preserved by their angel fathers in a bid to save them during the time of their pronounced earthly destruction by the Lord. As God always preserves a remnant before destruction, the fallen angels moved to do the same, taking a portion of their children by women, meaning the giant children that they had, and keeping them locked in ice for a time when they could arise and take vengeance against mankind for what they see as God's cruel judgment against them. God judged them because they completely corrupted, harassed, and almost destroyed mankind. These giants are not going to wait for anyone to dig them up. The vision that the Lord showed me, it's called, I think it's called the sons of old. The prophecy on the master's voice is called the sons of old. I was standing and I saw a mountain. That is what this prophecy is related to. When the Lord says the giants will not wait for anyone to dig them up. They will break their way out of their ice graves when the time is right. When the temperatures drop low enough for their blood to circulate again. When the polar zones become warm enough for them to thaw out, for them to become mobile and conscious Every memory of why they're in that ice and who caused them to be put there and when this happened and what the situation was about, their memories will come back to them in full and they will literally break their way out of those ice prisons and return to the earth to take a horrible revenge against humanity. And so this prophecy is speaking of two messages, and I'll speak of them briefly here. The first one is called the sons of old. So you can go to the master's voice and read that. I'll leave the link in the comments below. And what I saw is I saw a volcano and a non-active volcanic mountain in front of me, and it looked really flat, such a very flat mountain it was, but I could clearly see this is an inactive volcano. And as I was watching, the volcano became active again, but not with lava. It began to cough out snow. So huge balls and pockets of snow just began to fly out of this volcano. Foom, foom. And I was watching as if the Lord had put me very far away, but still able to see this volcano. And then as I looked, I saw men coming out. They were shaped like men, but they were so massive. They were such massive people coming out with the large beards and the, some of them had metal helmets on their heads and, you know, just dressed kind of like Vikings, the way you would think a Viking would be dressed. And they were literally punching their way up out of this mountain. And as I watched these men, they came out of the mountain and then stood along um, just imagine that this is the mountain and this is about the highest part of it. They stood like this. Nobody stood on the peak and then stood like this. And there are about 10 or 12 of them 
massive men with weapons. And I looked and I remember being very glad that the Lord was showing me this vision from far away because these men were very scary and extremely fierce. And they stood there and the Lord told me that the giants will wake up. The, the second prophecy um, where the Lord told me that they were kept through something called cryogenesis. Now, this is extremely interesting, and I had to look up this procedure. It's not, the word was familiar to me, but knowing exactly what it was, I didn't. And I looked it up, and it is the process by which you freeze living matter in a matter of seconds. So basically, it's fancy flash freezing. You freeze living matter, and if you do it well enough, that tissue is not destroyed. You shock the blood cells, you shock all the cells, you shock the tissue so quickly that it pauses in motion, and then it doesn't rot. It just basically becomes this solid block of ice and stays that way. And the Lord told me that this is how the fallen angels preserved their children before um, before the flood took place, they used cryogenesis, which is mind blowing because everyone thinks that back then none of this stuff was existing, but yet Solomon tells us that there is nothing new under the sun, that everything that is being done, everything that we think is brand new technology, everything that we think is such shocking breakthroughs. If you wake up a few dead pharaohs from the back, they would tell you, but oh, we used to do that with Amun-Ra and other Ra, and they would not be surprised at all. Nothing is new to those who lived far back enough when these creatures roamed the earth, because if there's one thing that the fallen angels are credited with in the book of Enoch, it is bringing impossibly advanced forms of knowledge to humanity which did not possess it at that time. And so in, in the prophecy, what I saw today, that's already a video. I will leave it linked below. In the prophecy, what I saw today, the Lord put me high in the air and took me to these snowy regions like the Antarctic or the Arctic. And high in the air, he gave me eyes to see down. And I saw these funeral beers. So I saw into the ice and I saw these funeral beers. It was like I was inside very icy, completely made of ice, not snowy ice, but the clear type. I was inside these burial chambers and I saw these very, very large men, except that they're not men. We don't grow to that size. And they were lying on funeral beers, which is just raised platforms of crystallized ice. And these men looked so fresh as if they just lay down for a nap. So those giants that are going to be coming from underneath the ice are not going to be rotten at all the way the pharaohs are rotten because they were using advanced embalming techniques that the fallen taught them and the fallen had promised them that you will wake up again. And this is why the pharaohs were so particular about how their bodies were to be preserved because this technology of reverse engineering, of building a thing backward from its rotted parts. If you just have a little bit of tissue or a little bit of blood, you can basically reclone and rebuild the man with a modern body. It's completely different from how the giants were preserved. The giants were preserved, these ice giants were preserved with their own bodies, their own tissue, their own cells, their own everything, and they were not dead. Their processes have been slowed down through this cryogenesis to the point that these men are merely sleeping. And this is something that you can look at throughout stories like Snow White and Sleeping Beauty. In the story of Snow White, she ate the poisoned apple, right? And she fell asleep for a while until this prince came along and gave her the magic kiss of life. But in the story of Sleeping Beauty, the curse fell upon the entire kingdom and they were sleeping for almost 100 years. Nobody got old, not the puppies, not the footmen, not the, not the servant ladies, not the king or queen or sleeping beauty herself. Everyone was perfectly preserved by some type of spell until that young prince found and gave the princess a kiss and he broke the spell and then she wakes up. So this supposed mythological concept of stopping time through 
intervening processes may seem like a joke to us now because we simply have no idea of how this is done. And yet I put it to you that it's just the ordinary man on the street and definitely most of us in the church who don't know how it's done. This information is preserved and carefully passed down generation to generation in other communities of the occult, esoteric knowledge, arcane knowledge. Occult doesn't mean witches. It means secret and carefully hidden. That is what that word means. And so in those communities, they keep and protect this information because Christians are sitting here and waiting for the return of their Lord and Savior, but they seem to be forgetting that the Bible warns us that there will be another Lord arising to rule this entire world with his cohort of unclean beings before our Lord returns. And so wicked people have indeed captured this information, and they're playing games with DNA now because they want to revive and remake these things. Snow queens. The Lord said that this refers to female giants and other female beings of the same caliber as the ice giants that I've spoken of. It also refers to demonic female creatures and devils that have a human form. They are deadly and malicious, and they kill people. I don't have much information on them except that he listed them under ice giants and he showed me some pictures to, to understand what he meant. So the first thing I saw was this, this same icy witch from, I think it's the C.S. Lewis, the C.S. Lewis series of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, where there is this evil witch character that can make people so cold hearted. So there is, there is female seduction and female spells that can freeze the heart and the empathy and the kindness of the human heart. And by this time, I know that everyone is going frozen, frozen, because indeed this was something else that he showed me that these women will be exactly like that young lady that Disney marketed to people's children, having the power to freeze hearts and to hit the heart with a power that can actually cause people to die. The verse he gave me for this is this, and I'm sure you will think about this verse in a different way when you hear it. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Matthew 24 and 12. I've shared often that when we read these scriptures, we just think, oh, God must mean the, the wickedness of my neighbor next door, or he must mean the wickedness of those who are in government or the leaders or the mayor. The Lord often is giving us a duality of truth. Yes, he is talking about wickedness that is going to happen on the human level, but there is high wickedness. Wickedness in the high places rulers of darkness that are also going to be able to get this same result out of the human heart. And so demonic seduction will be a powerful weapon of the end times Satanists. These are words that will be spoken with spells, with magic, or with something called the power of persuasion. Power of persuasion will be such that when you hear a person speaking, see, it's possible for demonic power to be on an ordinary person and you without discernment will not know. So when you hear this person speaking, you will find yourself in such rapturous agreement with the words that they're speaking. You'll be nodding and going, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I know what you mean. And sometimes when you leave that conversation, you will not be able to retain a shred of what was said to you. And that is the power of persuasion. Car salesmen have this gift, but in their case, it's just gift of the gab and ability to make a sale and be slick. When words are demonically empowered, when words carry the power of demonic seduction, they have the ability to make people who are not as strong as they think. This body is not as strong as we think. Neither is it indestructible. Neither is it even very well protected or good for fighting against supernatural and spiritual forces. The only thing that really protects, protects this frame is the presence of God dwelling within by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the word of God that is uttered from the mouth that 
has the power as a sword to fight against these other types of words that I'm telling you about. The blood of Jesus is one of the ways that we protect ourselves. The name of the Lord Jesus, faith in that name is one of the ways that we protect ourselves. And also the full armor of the Lord that you can read about in Ephesians chapter six, but demonic seduction is very powerful. And this is something that many human women are starting to move in and operate in either knowingly or unknowing unknowingly. So when this power of demonic seduction is working, you will find that you easily can come under the sway of this. And if it is strong enough, meaning if it is being empowered by spells and magic, then it becomes a higher type of wickedness than just normal seduction, using the body, using, using feminine wiles or using male attractiveness. This is where powerful satanic forces will come at work and put people greatly at risk. So as the Lord was speaking to me about these snow Queens, I saw a platinum blonde woman dressed almost exactly in Ilsa's dress, except that hers was a much more mature cut. So it wasn't that poofy princess sleeves and anything like that. This was very sophisticated with a cape at the back and she had a gold crown that ended in little balls. So it's very rare that you see that type of crown. That is, that is an old world crown um, from the elf kingdom just based on what I've read. She was wearing a very high gold spiky crown and each part of the crown had a solid gold ball at the end. She was extremely pale. This woman passed, um, she was almost as white as this prayer shawl that I'm wearing, extremely pale and bloodless woman with red lips and a very evil and angry ex expression. And she, her gown seemed to be made of ice and snowflakes. And she was very angry and she pointed her finger at a human being who was also dressed in ancient clothes. So it was as if the Lord was showing me a picture of something that happened long ago. She pointed her finger at a man who was just dressed like a common, common man, a common villager. And a long beam of crackling blue light came out of this woman's finger and hit this man right in the chest. It hit him in the chest and he froze and he became a pillar of ice. Again, if you've read any of these so-called fantasy, the true fantasy, not this mishmash that passes for fantasy novels now. Now people are just writing to, to get a Netflix series or to make a quick buck. You know, nothing wrong in that, but they're not writing what the old writers used to write. And in this prophecy, I shared that as a child, I greatly gravitated to these types of books, I was drawn to them almost as soon as I had understanding of what was happening in them. Anything with dragons, anything with goblins, anything with trolls, anything where the world would open up and you could go under the roots of a tree into another world. I was extremely taken with this. And the Lord never interrupted this reading, even into my adulthood, even until I was born again. He never interrupted this writing and only when he began to speak to me of these things, I put those books away, then understanding. But by that time, it was almost as if he was saying, Celestial, all that information that you read about Zeus and Mount Olympus and Romus and Romulus, the twins that apparently uh, were born and raised of a wolf, all that information I allowed to form a sort of database in you because I knew that the day would come when I would simply show up and tell you, all that stuff is history. It's not mythology. And so I saw this woman and she froze this person to death on the spot. And if you read the old good fantasy, which is almost impossible to find now, you will find stories of people being turned into wood. You will find stories of people being turned into stone. You will find stories of people turned into ice. And this is what happened to this man. He didn't turn into physical ice. His body, every cell in him, all the liquid in him, solidified him into a dead, frozen monument. And I knew, looking at this man, surprised and hit by this bolt, I knew that this man was dead. So he was, she did not 
send to him a strike whereby someone could come and kiss him and wake him up. This man was dead. I knew looking at him that this man has been frozen and his heart in him had burst because the blood in his heart, you know, the blood is rushing around in there. When that bolt hit him, the blood in that man's body became like daggers and it literally burst through the walls of his heart. So in him, his heart looked something like the way you see my hands now. The, the blood had been rushing around and it just turned into spikes when it froze and it punctured his heart in all areas. And so in that vision, I saw that summer came and this frozen man, his, this frozen human ice block began to melt and melt and he melted very slowly. So the ice on the trees and the ice in the lake and the ice on the grass and everything else melted according to the heat of the sun. But this man melted so slowly, drop by drop, that eventually when he defrosted, he fell to the ground looking as if he was still alive. The blood was still in his cheeks. He looked as fresh as a daisy, but he was extremely dead. And that is exactly the process that froze the ice giants, except they were frozen in a way that they will defrost normally and come out alive. This that I have described to you is the power of the entity that the Lord called Snow Queen, which will return to earth. And his tone was urgent when he spoke to me and he said, Celestial, listen, listen and pay attention. The time of separation, classification and AI living has come. The information age, that's what we call this current age. The information age is over and now humanity is going into a new age that he called the rise of AI and separation. The Lord says that there will be age and class restrictions, separation in the future that will stir up a lot of unrest between the haves and the have nots, the haves and the have nots. This is the time where people will be classed differently and treated differently for purposes of the new world order. And that classification is going to come from AI. AI is going to sort the available human population into different strata, and you will have to live in the strata to which you are assigned. So it will be something like the Indian caste system, except managed by robots. This is as the Lord was speaking, I saw three bowls in front of me. So three bowls of rice and the first bowl was full of rice. And the second bowl of rice had some rice. And then the last bowl had nothing. It had about two or three grains of rice in it. And I knew that if this is the portion, the ration that is going to be given to those who are poor, then this has a terrible meaning for those who AI will place at the bottom of the system because it is tended for them to starve. It is intended for them to starve. And so I just shared, the rest is just teaching, saying that Christianity is faith in a true God. And in order for that God to be true, then he has to bring forth all of what he wants his people to know and not just according to the expectations of his people. And so thank you for being with the master's voice. And until I see you again, God bless you and goodbye.